It is almost Thanksgiving, so you know what that means. It's time to do a turkey. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be brining a turkey and then throwing it on the Kamado Joe. We're gonna be using the briner. I got mine from Atlanta Grill Company. I'm also gonna be giving one away. All you have to do to enter is comment on this video and all the stipulations of the contest will be in the description below, but all you have to do is comment. So comment for a chance to win a briner, which came in very handy for doing my turkey. I know a lot of people that just use five gallon buckets, that's totally fine. I'm also using brine time from Atlanta Grill Company. This is an actual brine that they make. So that's what I'm gonna be using to brine this turkey. So let's talk about a couple of things. You can defrost your turkey in the brine. I did not do that. Some people think that's totally acceptable. What I would probably do is let your turkey go ahead and defrost in the refrigerator ahead of time fully and then brine it. Other people also suggest that you already have your brine, your wet brine, at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So I just kind of cheated a little bit. I mixed up my brine and I put some ice in to drop that temperature down so that the fridge didn't have to do all that work. So I defrosted my turkey. It took four days to defrost in the refrigerator. I got the brine ready to go. I added my ice in to drop it down to 40 degrees and then I put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. So for this video, I'm actually not gonna be injecting the turkey. I think injection is awesome, but I wanna show you without an injection just what you can get from a brine. So that's kind of the purpose of this video. Injection would just take it to the next level. I have nothing against injecting turkey. I think it's phenomenal, but I just wanted to show you kind of how juicy you can get this turkey without injecting it. We've got the grill all set up, but one of the things I'm gonna do first before starting the fire is we're actually going to put the turkey on the skewer, see if we can get it balanced, put it on here and kind of play with it. It's way easier to do it before you had the fire started because then your fire is kind of running away from you and then you've got the pressure of the fire and burning yourself and all that stuff. So before we even start the fire, we're gonna balance the turkey, get it all set up on the skewer, bring it out here, do a check, and then we'll go ahead and start the fire after that. I'm probably gonna rub this down in oil. Do not do that before tying it or you're gonna have a really hard time. I try to mention this in all of my jotisserie videos. It's a little like hack. I go out and I put the skewer on the jotisserie the very first thing that I do before ever cooking anything. And then I've scored the skewer on both sides on the inner side of the jotisserie so you know you can't put food past that line. So I got a nail and I just scratched on either side inside of the jotisserie so I know where to place the food. I think that's come in very handy. I've, some, I've seen some people use like markers and stuff. I don't even know how they get that to stay on there. I figured an actual scratch, a little bit more permanent. <laughs> a bit heavy. So the weight is down. So we're gonna move this up. Okay. Hopefully you can see this okay, but I just put this on. I don't have enough hands to like film myself putting it on. I'm gonna turn it on now just to see how our balance job did. I might push this one in a little bit. Okay, so we had a fall there. So we're slightly off balance. All right, let's see how we did. I might add an additional piece of string here just to hold everything together, but that looks pretty good, pretty balanced. I'm happy with that. I am gonna, I'm gonna add string just to hold those breasts in and hold those legs in and hold those wings in right in the middle there. I use a heat gun to start the fires. I got a video on this that you can check out if you're interested. It's a very cheap and effective way to start your fire.
We're also going to be using the Fireboard 2 today. If you are interested in this controller, I think it's awesome. It's the one that I actually recommend over the I Command, even for the Kamado Joe. I did a video on this as well. You can go ahead and check that out. This thing is awesome. So we're gonna use this to control this fire. We're also gonna be using meter which is like worth its weight in gold because it's a wireless Bluetooth thermometer. We're gonna put that in the breast of the turkey and they can spin all day, no issues, and we'll get the temperature there. Um, we're gonna hook this temperature probe since we don't have any grates in or anything. We're actually gonna hook this temperature probe from the fireboard onto the dome temperature probe. So if you have this little guy, it's got the large hole and that medium size hole. So you put your probe in the medium size hole and that large hole is actually the same size that can fit on this dome thermometer. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that on and I'll show you a close up of that just so that you can see it. But I found that this works really well and then we're gonna hook our Fireboard 2 fan onto the bottom and let it go between 325 and 350 is kind of what we're shooting for. Okay, we've got our grill started and we have our turkey ready to go inside. Now I'm gonna use the Fireboard app. I'm gonna get us up to 325. Once we hit that temperature, then I will take the bird outside and put it on. It's a little bit of a process. You're supposed to burp it. Oh, okay. The other thing is that have to go around this cable. <laughs> okay, baby, let's go. And then on. That rod is bending so much. It's funny. All right, we're gonna do a check. Just took it off the grill and uh, I already snuck a piece, not on camera, but it is absolutely phenomenal. Incredibly juicy and insanely tender. Flavor is great as well. This breast meat is very, very good. Tender. Mm. The reason that I didn't inject is because I wanted to show you kind of what a baseline brine can accomplish, even without the jotisserie, you can still get this juicy of meat without injecting. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level, absolutely inject, but I am very pleased with the amount of juice that we have in there and the tenderness as well. Some parts of the skin, very crisp, other parts, not as much. Not 100% sure why, but I think what I could do next time is maybe up the temperature just a bit at the end for like 10 minutes or so to try to get all the skin crisp and then take it off. But I would have no problem serving this at Thanksgiving. I know not everyone has a jotisserie, but I'm trying to show you what you can do with it. It's amazing. Be on the lookout on Black Friday, Atlanta Grill Company. They normally put the jotisseries on sale. Go out, grab one. I also did a video on wings. We've done fries. We've done all kinds of stuff on it. It is an awesome accessory. Not that the Kamado Joe needs it at all, very versatile cooker, but it's a lot of fun to play with. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching Break It Yourself. As always, don't forget to thumbs me up. But the most important thing 
that you can do is actually share this video. So if you know someone who is into barbecuing or into cooking turkey, or it's almost Thanksgiving, use this video to prepare for Thanksgiving. Share it, the YouTube algorithm absolutely loves it. Again, thanks for watching Break It Yourself, and we will see you next time.